Welcome to the Mothers of Misfits podcast. Join me for conversations about how to advocate for our kids in a one-size-fits-all world. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Mothers of Misfits. I love that this podcast introduces me to some of the most incredible people, some that are around the world, and in this case, Don is right in my backyard, just about. He's a fellow Pittsburgher, so let me tell you a little bit more about Don before we jump in. Don Orkoski is the owner of WDO Photography. He is a photographer, of course, a business artist, teacher, and advocate. He's also neurodivergent, we're gonna talk about that, and his work as a portrait and event photographer centers on his clients' mental and emotional needs. I I just love your perspective on capturing family moments. Don, thanks for coming on. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm I'm really happy to be here, and I'm I'm so glad that um, you're doing what you're doing because uh, having a resource like this is incredible. Uh, I think I said when I reached out to you, I wish that my my mom had such a resource. Um, uh, I was uh, diagnosed with ADHD late in life, actually just this fall. And um, of course, when I told my mom that she was, uh, she uh, felt that guilt, you know, that mom guilt. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, moms will find a way to be guilty about something. But yeah, that's a very serious moment for the both of you. Yeah. Yeah. She said, Oh, I, you know, I guess I screwed up. I didn't catch that. I'm like, you know what? I'm 43. So I remember younger cousins. I remember siblings, uh, Mm -hmm. younger siblings of friends being diagnosed, but no one in, in my class, right. Was Mm -hmm. diagnosed. No one my age was diagnosed Mm -hmm. when I was, when I was a kid. So, um, so I think, you know, I I told her (laughs) not to blame herself for, for that. So, Well, we're in a different era, and you're a great reminder of the progress that we've made as a society that we're much more aware of neurodivergence. We're much more accepting of that. We have more resources for that, schooling. We really, I know sometimes on this podcast, we focus on the bits that we still have yet to go, but we've really come so far, and that's certainly something to be celebrated. And I'm really glad you shared that because everything you're about to tell us about the experience of getting your pictures taken, uh, which is pretty universal. I think just about every family out there probably has had one, uh, if not more, uh, professional photography sessions. Um, And I shared with you before we started recording that I remember on many occasions where I have had to change my clothes, do a complete wardrobe change because I had sweat through them because it, it was like, herding cats, (laughs) you know, some kid was crying and, um, you know, it, it's, I guess it's just so indicative of what we all say about how, you know, what we put on social media is this pretty smiling picture of a family. And then the 45 minutes up to that one moment is chaos. I feel it. I've been there. We've all had those experiences of the family photo sessions just being almost like comedy. So I love that you're not, Yes, or like combat. I like that too. So I love that you're coming on and talking to us not only about how to just make uh, photography a a pleasant experience for everybody, but then that extra layer that you have firsthand understanding of is for neurodivergent family members as well. So, you know, this is already challenging and then that's a whole other level of challenge. But before we get into your advice for us about how to make that a better experience, what are some of the challenges that you think neurotypical photographers may miss, just not even being aware of? That's a, that's a really good question. I think it really depends on the level of experience they have. There's a lot of resources out there for photographers uh, when it comes to working with kids with all sorts of special needs from mobility issues to neurodivergence. And um, it really, I think, matters how much they take advantage of that how much they're aware of those things. Um, and I think most most parents of neurodivergent kids normally do a pretty good job of, of you know, letting people know in advance. That's, you know, that's, that's again, that's one of those anxiety points, right, mm-hmm. as a parent, right, that mm-hmm. you have. Um, I need to tell, I need to tell this person that, that, about this expectation, right? Um, 
And that's, you know, that's a great thing. That's, that's important. Okay. So first tip (laughs) I'm picking up is communicate with your photographer in advance. Don't assume that they're going to know the idiosyncrasies or needs of your family, no matter who you are and what your needs are. And I'm thinking this is like maybe a five, 10 minute conversation in advance, but just, Hey, heads up, here's what's going to make this experience better for all of us or more challenging for all of us. That is so important. And you're right. That's, that's the first tip because, um, as a photographer being prepared and it, it's important to talk about you and your family and your Mm -hmm. experiences and your limitations. And, uh, because if somebody, again, if they have no experience, right, if, if their experience with somebody who is on the spectrum is, uh, watching atypical on Netflix, right. (laughs) <laughs> you know, they ha- they they come with these preconceived notions that are based mm-hmm. on popular media, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I'm going to deal with a quirky kid or whatever mm-hmm. it is, right? So, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> but if they don't have any real life experience working with somebody who's on the spectrum, or working with somebody who has Down syndrome or something like that, then they, they're, even if they do, right, the, the, the people present so vastly differently, mm-hmm. um, regardless of their diagnoses, right? So we're people first, right? Yes. Um, yes, we're all misfits in our own beautiful, messy, perfect way. And, and you know, no, no two people are alike. And that's the, the theme of the podcast is there is no fit in. And even amongst the neurodivergent community, we can't create these stereotypes and make these assumptions. So that's really simple. Yeah. And you had actually mentioned again before we hit the record uh, that it's much less intimidating for parents to advocate for their kids with a photographer, for example, than with a medical professional. So that was I, I wouldn't have thought about that until you said it. But so true. I mean, this is also just good practice because the stakes are lower. You know, this is easy for us to say, OK, I'm going to. I'm going to practice my bravery here and and have this conversation with somebody that feels a lot easier to talk to than when the stakes are a lot higher or I might uh, face some more pushback. Right. The thing is, uh, as much as I love being a photographer, there are a million other photographers out there. So if somebody's not a good fit, Mm -hmm. if somebody's not listening, if they if they're not respecting you, you can say, you know what, I'm going to find another photographer. So it is good practice. Yeah, Yeah. good point. Okay, so let's get into the heart of it. You've developed a process over the last 20 years to help families and parents and kids to, you know, deal with this often emotionally difficult, routine interrupting uh, experience of being photographed. So can you talk us through that? Yeah, Uh, like you like you said, it starts with communication. So um, there's. There are a lot of different types of family photographers out there. When I was a kid, we went to Sears, right? Uh, yes, Hills. I think it was even Hills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, whoa, flash, flashback. And we had those hideous backdrops <laughs> that, yeah. that weren't fooling anybody. <laughs> that wasn't yeah. really back there. <laughs> yeah. The bookshelf, the fake bookshelf. This yes. is a real bookshelf. <laughs> This isn't just the background. Yes. Oh, wow. I'm really glad we're past that now, except for school photos. But that whole yes. story for another day. Yes, that was our experience well, when we were kids. Yeah. And the kids today don't know what it's like to, to you know, ask for the laser background and have mom say no, right? Because it costs more. <laughs> So, um, but you know, we went to, we went to Sears, we went to, uh, you know, when my mom was making good money, we went to Olin Mills. Right. So, but it's, it's, uh, you have 15 minutes and you get in there. It doesn't matter who's throwing a fit. It doesn't matter if mom's makeup's not right. You know, if dad's hair's sticking up, like you just get in there and you, and you do your thing. Um, they are, are posing you just like everybody else. Um, and that's, again, if, you know, if that's what you're, if that's what you're after and, and your family's capable of doing that, then, you know, no shame. Right. Um, but for me, uh, it's, it's regardless of, of who I'm photographing, I want the, the, their photos to reflect who they are, their personality, how they see themselves. Um, and that extends to the family, right? How, how the individual family members see themselves, how they want to be presented to the world. Right. Um, 
that's number one for me. Number two is, uh, and this is a big thing for me is I'm there to take pictures, but I'm not there to traumatize anybody. Yeah, which I you you chuckled a minute, but I think for some people, this actually can be traumatizing. So that's a great Yeah, to bring that up it it, and can make them not ever want to go through that experience again. So can you really, really kind of hit that home on that point? Because I don't want to gloss over it. Oh, absolutely. I am. Um, in fact, I had a, a, another photographer who I know who who posted a question about um, the senior. She said, I, "I'm taking this. I've taken the seniors' pictures four times, mm. and she's absolutely beautiful. She could be a model, but she has body is, uh, body image issues." And she said, "What can I do?" And I said, mm. "Stop taking her picture. It doesn't matter how beautiful you think she is. It doesn't matter how beautiful mom mm. thinks she is. She." It, she doesn't need to be in her yearbook, right? Like yeah. how many times do you pull your high school yearbook off the shelf <laughs> Never. And, and look at your, <laughs> and look at your picture, right? Even if you, even if you go back and read the comments from other people, you know, yeah, it's nice for them to be able to see your picture, but if it's something that is causing that much trauma and stress and anxiety, you, you don't need that. Right. And that's so <clears throat> for me, understanding and expressing who these who these folks are working working with you as a as a client and helping to understand that making sure that i understand that is is number one but number two is if somebody says no i don't want my picture taken not today and i don't you know if that's a a four-year-old right i'm not going to force them to do it It, you know if it's a if it's a 17 year old i'm not going to force them to do it right to me that's you know uh, we can try again if, uh, you know, when, when they're in a, a better place, um, if they want to, but, um, it's, uh, it, I think body autonomy and mental autonomy is so important. Uh, being able to say, no, I don't want this, uh, and, and not being forced into it is, is critical to me. So, um, and they should, they should have, uh, you know, I, I don't want any child to walk past the family portrait up on the wall and be triggered by that, right? Because that was a horrible experience for them. And you don't want that as a parent, right? (laughs) So, um, so that's something that I, I like to explain to like, if, if we're, if we're not doing it, if we, if we can't get it done, if, if, if somebody says no, then, then that's it. No is no. Right. And we stop there. So, um, now obviously there's, there's folks that have, um, different time constraints or that, that in the middle of being photographed, um, can, you know, get, get kind of tired of it, but we, again, we can do a a second session. We can do a third session. Um, and that I make, I make clear from the get go. And that's something that, um, when looking for a photographer, um, is a good question to ask, what's the cancellation policy, right? If we need to reschedule, um, is there additional fees for rescheduling? There's largely, you can break uh, portrait photographers down into, into two groups. Those that are, that are doing sort of volume, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Which tend to be more um, uh, cost effective, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but they're, again, their job is, it's the, it's the, the Hills Sears model, right? Mm-hmm. Get you in, get, get the photos. They have 10 poses. They're going to, they're, you know, they're um, top 10 that sell the best. And mm-hmm. so they're going to put you in those poses and they're going to show them to you and you're probably going to love them right mm-hmm. if if, mm-hmm. Every, if everything went well um and then there's you know photographers that like myself we're, we're a little bit more expensive but we're also a little more customized we mm-hmm. you know we spend our time um getting to know you and again if we need to reschedule if we need to um uh, i i travel so oh. if 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 you're <clears throat> if you need to be in a familiar setting if you need to be at home if you need mm-hmm. to be at the the local park um you know uh so that it's not too disruptive we do that right mm-hmm. and i don't rush into the house set up a backdrop and start taking pictures right we come in i i meet the kids whatever we need to do to get you the photos for for your family that that you will love right and mm-hmm. that reflect who you are and that um, 
that again don't cause trauma that don't cause stress because there's 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 already going to be stress and anxiety right it is it is something different it's something mm-hmm. disruptive uh, when I arrive I, I come in I meet everybody in the family you know mm-hmm. we get comfortable right before we take any pictures I think that's so important um, and and I'm not alone in that there are, there are a lot of other photographers that, that similarly mm-hmm. uh, will do will do that um, and then again, we're checking in the whole time during the shoot. So how's everybody feeling? You know, are we, are we good? Can we keep going? To me, that's really, that, that's vital because again, I, I want to make sure that, that, uh, everyone's feeling, feeling good. They're not mm-hmm. sweating through their clothes. I know. Right? So, <laughs> so really it's about, it's lowering that anxiety beforehand. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, um, being in a setting that's more comfortable. Um, and then it's constant communication and there's so many kinds of anxiety, whether not just, not just if this is routine disruption, but mm-hmm. my most recent, um, sort of, uh, rough experience, I would say, um, there was a, a family that I was doing portraits for and, um, a neurotypical 13 year old girl, mm-hmm. um, her older sister, um, is thinner than she is. And she's still, I mean, she's thin, but she still has like, like some baby cheeks, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Cause she's 13. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think she has some, some body uh, image issues. Um, and she's also 13. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's rough such time. a rough age. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, gr- grandma really wanted photos for, uh, for Christmas. And that's all she wanted. So the pressure Mm-hmm. is there right yeah i gotta please grandma, grandma. Mm-hmm. gotta please grandma grandma wants this do you know i've got to do this her own her own feelings of um uh, her her body image issues that she mm-hmm. was feeling right mm-hmm. are weighing on her the social pressure of here's this person that i don't know who's coming in here and once she said i don't like this picture and began to get agitated you know, then it got even more because now what's, is is this person, is this photographer judging me? Right. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, when, when these situations happen, I say, okay, we can fix this. Let's, we're going to keep going as long as you want to keep going. And we're going to create a photo that you like, that you feel that you look nice in. Right. And Mm -hmm. we did. Um, It was, it was a more, it was a less conventional portrait Mm -hmm. that we ended up doing. Typically, as a photographer, you use uh, longer, more telephoto lenses when, when okay. photographing portraits. I put a wide angle lens on, which, oh. which tends to things that are closer to the camera appear larger. So, but you know, there's, there's angles that you can work with that way that she actually felt like she looked better in that mm-hmm. and was really happy with the end result. Mm-hmm. So she had calmed down, but at one point mom had to take her aside and, and, and talk her through this, but thinking about all of those pressures, right? She's mm-hmm. got the pressure of the stranger here, right? Mm-hmm. Who's no matter, you know, I, I'm not judging her, but, but that's what's in your head, right? When, right. When, she's, when she's thinking that could be happening. Yeah. 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 It, exactly. She's thinking that could be happening. Mom and dad are upset with me because I'm upset. I can't say no to this because this is for grandma and this is all she wanted for Christmas and she'll be upset. Right. And of course, those internal pressures of, I don't think that I look good, right? Mm-hmm. So all of that stuff is just swirling around in a 13-year-old girl's head. And I mean, <laughs> that's that's a lot. But working through that, we came up with a, a portrait that she really loved. I appreciate you walking us through that because I yeah, I, I forget what it's like to be a 13-year-old girl sometimes. And I'm a boy mom now, but they're going to go through similar feelings of pressures and self doubt mm-hmm. insecurities. And I, I just, I realize now in my adult brain, I don't always think about that stuff anymore or appreciate it to the degree that you did in that instance. And I really love how you put the pause button on, you checked in, you made sure she felt comfortable before anyone moved forward. And on that note, I want to just overview what I'm hearing from you are the steps that parents can take to make this a successful experience. And first and foremost, I'm hearing, know what you need and want, get really clear on what your family needs in the experience and what you want as an outcome, and then choose the photographer accordingly. You you gave two different potential 
uh, sort of routes, if you will. So which route makes sense for your family and your budget? Mm -hmm. Then have a conversation beforehand with a photographer, both to prep them for your family's unique needs and sharing what you need and want, being clear about all of that, but also making sure like you said, what's the flexibility? What's the cancellation policy? What happens if we're not feeling it that day? So that's the pre-work. And then when the day arrives, making sure everybody's comfortable before you jump in. You know, we're not going to be robots and just stand and smile. It's getting to know each other, choosing a comfortable setting, and constantly checking in with your kids, with the parents, with each other, with the photographer, having that open communication, not just, hey, stand there, you know, kick it on my <laughs> with your ankle. <laughs> hey, stand up straight. You know, checking Elbow in. Here and, exactly. Yeah. And just <laughs> being in tune to those off moments. Mm -hmm. We know it in our kids. We know when something's, you know, up with them. And I like that you are also in tune as the photographer. And then, uh, you know, if you're not feeling it, you're not feeling it. Being willing to say, we're not feeling it today. We need to do this a different day. And and make sure that it's not a traumatic experience by us forcing it. So that's right. what I'm gathering. And I think, you know, there's a lot of, I think, grace in your process, right? Just allowing for us to be human, for us to have in bad days, for us to being unique and having different needs. And as long as we recognize that, um, and that's why I actually love candid pictures. I'm a big fan of the non pose stuff because that's the real, that, that's what it really is. That's the authentic view of who we are. And that's what I'm really just gathering from your approach is just authenticity, being real, recognizing the people as they are, and then just putting them in their own best light, but not trying to make them somebody they're not. And hello, mothers of misfits. I mean, that's what we're here for. <laughs> We just want to highlight what's great about every person, but also what's different about them. Right. And that's um, uh, some some families need, you know, uh, we have 15 minutes and then and then we're going to really, um, you know, we're going to be done. Right. Yeah. The, right. This my, my kid, they're they're, you know, 15 mm -hmm. minutes and then they're going to be done. And if I know that going in then I know, okay, let's, let's do this quickly. Let's, let's be efficient. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, some folks are like, you know what, at some point we might have to stop for some self soothing. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and that's fine too. So finding a photographer that, that is not going to say you have 60 minutes, right. <laughs> or you have 45 minutes. There's a, a really popular uh, thing called mini sessions that mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. of photographers do these days. So mm -hmm. It's you, you're they're booked every half hour and you have about 20 minutes of, of time. And again, it's sort of that that Sears mm -hmm. style. So now they, they oftentimes are at parks or things like that. And there's some people that do beautiful work there. But if we need to stop after five minutes for, you know, for a little break and to self soothe and, and to just just breathe. Right. Mm -hmm. If you've got 20 minutes, you're not going to get through that session. If you're, if your family, again, if, if the kids are like, I've got 15 minutes and then that's going to be it, go for it. Then a mini mm -hmm. session's probably great because those photographers know I, I've got, you know, I've got 15 mm -hmm. minutes. I'm going to get you bang, 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 bang. And then you're done. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, if you need more time, if you, if you need that space, a photographer who's not saying like, oh, no, I've got to go. I've got another session, right? Yeah, which puts extra pressure. Everybody feels the pressure to force it, which goes against everything we've just said. Just don't add any more pressure. Know what you need and want and, and work with that, not against it. Love that. Absolutely, because the kids feel that pressure too. It's oh, not yeah. just that mom and dad feel that pressure. The kids, the and, and uh, you know, the situation that, uh, that I referenced about the 13-year-old, um, you know, she definitely was feeling that like, we have to get this done. We have to do, you know, this, mm -hmm. like, we've got time. We have the day, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. obviously we're not going to spend six hours trying to get this photo, mm -hmm. but you know, don't look at the clock. Don't think about the clock. We're, we're here till we get it done and we're going to get it looking great. Well, I love how you approach this. And I'm sure there's a lot of people listening who now want you to take their family photos. <laughs> and I will tell all of you because um, it, sometimes it's hard to capture by hearing it or writing it down. We will put all of Dawn's contact information in our episode Insiders newsletter. If you don't know what that is, we will send you an email every Tuesday when a new episode drops. 
It's really just extra information about our guest, including how to get a hold of them, and in this case, how to potentially work with Dawn. So if you're not already signed up to receive those, make sure to go to mothersofmisfits.com, scroll to the bottom of the page. All you have to do is just put in your email address. It'll take you 30 seconds or less. So make sure to do that. Dawn, this has been a really interesting conversation because it's on a topic that we haven't covered before, but it's so universal. I mean, we've all experience this and and maybe others out there have sweat through their clothes too maybe i'm not the only one <laughs> you are absolutely not the only one i've 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 seen that experience yeah yeah oh well thanks for helping us make this experience which is so important to all of us a better one and just appreciate the work that you're doing and how you're being an advocate not only for yourself but also for the families that you serve well it's it's super important to me you know mm-hmm. I, again the at the end of the day, not causing harm, right, is the important mm-hmm. thing for me, is the most important thing. So the picture comes after that, right? So thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the Mothers of Misfits podcast. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. We also invite you to visit us at mothersofmisfits.com. <laughs>